I've never seen a diamond in the flesh. I cut my teeth on wedding rings. In the Dude, that's pretty oh, cool. Man, that is a, I miss that, that is clown. Sad clown. clown. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty good. This is the gloom, bringing you weekly interviews with F3 Omaha packs, exploring their F3 experiences and finding those sticky elements that create the glue in the gloom. Shout out to our sponsors, Major Team Mortgage, Omaha Laser Dentistry, Exclusively Eye Care, Liberty Core Real Estate, Avier Wealth Management, and Apex Men's Clinic. We appreciate their support. Hey Gloom listeners, it's The Plague. Question for you, are you ready to perform at your peak? Well, our man P Soup and the Apex Men's Clinic is here to help you achieve optimal health. Whether it's managing general health concerns, recovering from injuries, or optimizing your hormones, they have you covered. Their comprehensive services include testosterone replacement therapy, cutting edge treatments, and personalized care plans tailored just for you. At Apex Men's Clinic, you're not just another number. Their expert team is dedicated to helping you feel your best. Visit apexmensclinic.com today to schedule a free consultation. At Apex Men's Clinic, it's men's health done right. Now let's get back to the gloom. And we're back. Uh, excited to to get this guy's story out there. I know um, I've had several conversations in the gloom over the years about life and and family and leadership and um, you know the, the ups and downs. Uh, and normally I'm able to keep up with him, although I think he he just keeps getting faster as he gets older. Uh, but was recently in a site queue at uh, our second F3 Omaha Thursday site, Futurama. Uh, and so I've got our man Stitches here. Uh, it's good to see you, man. We both are wearing the pink shirts today. Um, you've got the ears is a little tighter collar, though, with the in-office kind of look. I'm kind of the laid back, uh, you know, work from home guy, I guess. But uh, tell me where we like to start these is um, just the beginning. What was the EH story? Kind of who brought you out? Uh, how'd they convince you to come out? And then uh, talk us through the infamous, how you got the name? <laughs> oh, no, I should have I should have excluded that ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me here, Plague. Um, I'm super excited to uh, spend the time with you. And yeah, so EH story, you know, um, like many, many, many of us, uh, Slow Pitch played a pretty significant role in my, uh, yeah. in my first post. He and I were coaching some um, like winter skills baseball sessions together. And I, I had never met him before. And, and it was just something that my son, Will, uh, was interested in through some other friends of his. And so uh, it was during, yeah, it had to be during COVID. We were all like wearing masks or some kind of face covering and trying to teach, you know, eight maybe seven-year-old, eight-year-old boys had to throw baseballs indoors. Uh, so that yeah. was, you know, that was an interesting experience on its own. But, uh, you know, he, slow pitch, like he has for so many of us, he just kind of started poking around and asking questions. And I think the way he always tells it now, he's like, hey, what are you doing at, you know, five o'clock in the morning tomorrow? And my response must have been, uh, at least if his memory is correct, oh, you know, I'm probably – you know, sitting up in bed, stressing out about work or something like that. Um, mm. And so, you know, he was absolutely uh, integral to me kind of taking that final step. You know, I knew, I knew Ketchup, uh, who I work with here at Olson. Ketchup had been kind of chipping away at me for a while. Uh, Relish, who used to be uh, pretty active up here in Omaha, we moved him down to Fort Worth. And, and he's still down there. Uh, but Relish, uh, you know, another uh, just a super fit and super great guy that that uh, it's easy mm -hmm. to look up to. Uh, mm -hmm. He was involved. And so I kind of from a peripheral perspective, and maybe maybe more once I finally made that first post, I started seeing guys like, oh, I know who that is. And I know who that is. And these are all really, really great guys. Uh, and you know, that's just been reinforced for, for now over three years, pretty much every, yeah. every time I come out, it's like, there's another new guy that, uh, that really fits in with the rest of us really, really well. 
Yeah, Olson must be. You guys must be doing something there because we. I think um, I just interviewed Black Tuesday yeah. not too long ago. He's there. Who Who else is there? There's like probably almost ten guys there. You uh, think? Probably close to that here, uh, just in Omaha. So Rocket is another one. Uh, actually, uh, I met him. He He literally sat fifty feet away from me. Uh, but he's in communications, and you know, I've always been an engineer, so we didn't really cross paths. And I met him in the gloom, and then figured out that he worked for Olson, which was kind of funny. Uh, yeah. There's a long list. Uh, there's a long list of uh, Olson folks um, in F3 Omaha, which is, it's really That's fun cool. to see. I, I, I couldn't, we, we keep kind of a rough list. I could probably go and find it, but uh, it's gotta yeah. be 10, 12, maybe by now. Um, lots of, lots of good guys in that crew. That's cool. Well, talk us through, I mean, you know, what was your impression of that? Or I guess, where was the first workout at? First workout was at Future. Uh, so okay. Future's always been kind of a special place for me. It's really close to my house. And uh, it was my first post. It was my VQ. And I was the site queue there for the last year. Uh, and it's just a great site. I was there this morning. Uh, Q-Tip gave us a great beat down. And it's also the 80th anniversary of D-Day landings. And oh, wow. so there's, they're doing a, some kind of commemoration there in the park. There was already old vets kind of showing up with their, you know, with like their, their, uh, vests and their patches on. And so, That's cool. uh, and, and Q-Tip's mom was actually a field nurse in Europe for three years during world war II. Uh, wow. so, you know, from that perspective, I, it's just a really, it's a really great and really special site. Um, the, like thinking, thinking back to my very first post, it was pantyhose on the queue. Uh, it was, it was a good, a tough yeah, workout. it was a good, tough, salty beat down. And I was, um, you know, I was basically 20 years removed from any consistent kind of workout routine. And, uh, you know, very fortunate that throughout that time, I never like, I never, I've never had to like watch what I eat or do some of those things, but I was certainly in that strongly in that category where I was like skinny out of shape guy. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was, it was rough. I mean, I remember that first beat down being really challenging, but, uh, and it's still the same today, like the, just the vibe and the camaraderie and the guys made me know I wanted to come back the next day, like right away. And that, um, you know, I'd done little bits and pieces and stints of, of like workout stuff uh, since I really, since I got out of high school, there'd been little phases there where I tried something out and it would just kind of not stick. And uh, this has been completely different. And it, it, it's 100% about the people and the, the guys that you meet and the guys that keep you accountable. That's exactly what keeps me back. And the, the fitness side of it is almost a byproduct of the second F for me. Yeah, I love that. It's so cool just to hear just like the, how that starts, right? Just this little mustard seed of somebody being like, you know, hey, what's life like for you, right? And then kind of as, as, you know, slow pitch, as like you said, I think he's done this to so many guys where it's like, once he starts finding out, then he's going to start <laughs> matching it to show up. How long do you think he was the H in you before you, you showed up? Or was it a pretty quick sell? You know, I think, um, I think ketchup was probably like, had been working me a little bit. And then I met... Okay. Uh, slow pitch probably only had to, had to push a little bit to get me to finally be like, yeah, we should go and see that. And I'd also add like they're, um, kind of in a similar, in a similar season for me, that same kind of time period, I was developing some friendships with some guys that I still have. Um, m most of them have, have come out to F3 and, and maybe occasionally still do, but they're not, they're not hardcore F3 guys. But hmm. they, in a similar way, like they, they just really have their stuff together and they, they all had a workout routine that they were doing They're um, at least a couple of them, they're, they're older guys than I am. And they just, they're people I looked up to. And I, I was like, you know, we get together and we talk about all this great stuff. And like, they talk about how they keep themselves fit and the, the time that they give to themselves 
uh, you know, the time that they almost demand for themselves. And I'm like, you don't, mm. I look at it myself. I, I wasn't doing that. That was something that I, yeah. I failed to do. And so like, again, all these great guys around me just sort of forcing me to get better or showing me how I could be better played a big role in, in me being ready to, to take that first step, make that first post. Like I was just kind of, yeah. I was primed from several different directions to make that first post. That's super cool. What, um, so, so lead us into the, uh, the naming story. What, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's a PG version or not, but what, how'd you, how'd you get the name stitches? Yeah. So, uh, one of the things I was told before that first post was, you know, come with any compromising stories, you know, prison time. Thankfully I have not done tattoos. I have, I have zero tattoos, uh, compromising stories. I have a good one. So, uh, if anybody hasn't heard it, this is, this is maybe breaking my rules too. Cause I always tell people when they ask, I'm like, I will tell you if you come and post, uh, <laughs> but I, I won't tell a, you know, I won't tell a typical civilian my story until they've earned it. Uh, but yeah, so I was a pretty, I was a pretty solid hurdler in class B, uh, in high school. I grew up in small town, Northeast Nebraska, and, uh, I was a, you know, state medal winner and all that stuff. And, uh, my senior year, I actually, um, I clipped a hurdle in a bad way and lacerated the left side of my scrotum. And so when I told that story on my FNG day, stitches was absolutely the best option of many, of yeah. many <laughs> options that were thrown out that would sort of capture the capture that moment. Um, stitches was one I could definitely live with. Uh, and you it's, know. you know, it's, it's a fun story still to tell when I'm, when I'm running next to some guy, I don't know. It always gets a yeah. response. Uh, yeah. you know, could have, could have been hurdles or it could have been scrotum. It could, it, scrotum, was, <laughs> scrotum was definitely one option that was thrown out. Oh, and that's I, too I think funny. we're all happy that that's not my handle. Yeah. 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 Cause you, cause you might not have come back, right. If, if that was your, your nickname. you know, I've, you always worry about that. If you, if you're, if you go one step too far with the name, are you, are you, mm -hmm. are you scaring somebody away? Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, curious. Um, so you were a runner or did hurdles, right? It sounds like, you know, growing up and, and were fit for a while. What do you think caused you to kind of enter that? You said is almost like a 20 year mm -hmm. hiatus from, from physical fitness. Do you think, was it, just because you've got high metabolism and you didn't feel like you needed it or what, what caused you to get out of that? Routine? You know, it, it's a great question. Uh, I've certainly thought about that a lot. Um, you know, the, if, if just kind of where I come from, I was still, I'd say I was active in that I would, you know, I, I move a lot. I, I would, I would do things. I would, I would build things. I work construction, you know, I, it's not that I was, necessarily like sedentary. It was just, sure. I did not ever focus on my actual fitness like this, uh, for a really long time. And some of that, uh, again, like the, the men I grew up with, uh, the men in my family, they, they didn't, they didn't work out, they, you know, really they didn't, they didn't golf. They didn't do much of anything. Uh, I'm talking like, you know, stoic, small town, uh, hardworking, mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily like leisure activity or, or, or that type of making space for that type of activity. It just wasn't really even part of the equation for, yeah. um, for almost any of them. And so, uh, it was just something that I kind of had to grow up and, and, and understand better. Um, that was, was definitely one of, uh, one of my hurdles. I would say I also spent, you know, I spent a good part of that 20 year period, probably drinking too much, um, mm, sure. you know, having bad habits like that, that occupied my time. You know, if, if I had free time to give, it was going to go to something like yeah, having too many beers, um, yeah. waking up the next day with a hangover, you know, it's hard to get up at four 30 in the morning with a hangover. So, yeah. uh, I had to slay some of those jokers before I was really ready. 
Um, I'm on, I'm coming up on five years of sobriety, total sobriety starting in in August. Yeah. Which again, it like it, it's crazy how it's, it's crazy when I say five years. I mean, it it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's been that long. Um, but you know, luckily I don't miss it. It's not something I really struggle with anymore. So, uh, I had to, I had to get over some of that stuff before I was really ready to join a group like F3. That's super cool. And, you know, as I hear you kind of sharing that, you know, it's funny, I was, I was out for a run the other day and on my way back, I saw my neighbor who's a farmer and the look he gave me was sort of like a, <laughs> like, what are you yeah. doing out running? Yeah. You know, like that's, you know, and so I, I feel like that's maybe how you're, you're describing maybe some of the men in your family were like working out, like, what is that even, what do you, what's, why, why would you do that? So it's interesting just to hear, um, that perspective, but, you know, as I'm thinking through, so the fitness piece, then, um, you know, you got back into it and you got going and now you've just taken off. Like, how do you get to the point where you're like, you're one of the fastest guys, I guess, outside of break room now. Right. No, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I like, um, it seems like you have this drive to just keep pushing to see what your body can do, but where, where does that come from? Well, I, to clarify, I don't think I've gotten any faster in probably, a year and okay. maybe longer. Uh, and there are, there are many, many guys in F3 that are faster than I am. Uh, break room this morning, uh, for sure on our, on our pre-run, <laughs> you know, he got, yeah, he got, he got me and, and I'm like, there's, there's definitely an internal kind of competitive nature in me that, that keeps me, going really kind of as hard as I can all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. and that's, you know, that's just kind of how, how I'm wired, I think, but I love seeing break room out in front of me, you know, and, and, uh, any number of guys, there's so many of them that I'm chasing at any given time. And it's so great to see everybody else have, have success. Like, and, and I get, I get just as inspired, maybe sometimes even more so by like our triple respect guys that yeah. keep showing up. You know, we have on the East side, we have, um, we have hipster and yeah. the guy's an animal and he's, you know, 71, maybe 72 years old now. And he shows up religiously and, mm-hmm. uh, he will not take the shortcut. Like that it's the hardest thing for him to be, to do would be to take a shortcut. And that's so inspiring to me this morning. So hipster is rocket who works with me here at Olson is rockets dad this morning, tight lip and I are running our lap around the circle in the middle of the beat down and hipster and rocket are running side by side back to uh, the starting point. And, that's and, cool. and tight lip is he's like, look at that. I was like, that's amazing. And I mean, I hope I'm that, I hope, I hope, I have two sons. I hope one of them or both of them are running next to me when I'm 70 and we're, you know, still up here running around Memorial park. I, I nothing would make me happier. That's super cool. Yeah. It, there's something to be said about just the, some of those glimpses into like the hopeful future, right? Like, like you see something like that and you're like, wow, you know, it just reminds us to be better fathers now so that we keep those relationships and, and can have those things going. But man, I, I love it. And I think, um, you know, I definitely appreciate your, your drive and motivation. You know, I think over the years I've, I've seen that wax and wane for myself. And, um, when I was first sober, it was sort of like, I was, I was just addicted to mm-hmm. it. Right. That like pushing myself as hard as I could go. And then, and then you, I've kind of noticed myself like I can get a little bit lazy and, you know, but then when I'm around a guy like you, um, it just reminds me like, why not? Why would I not push a little bit harder, go a little faster? Um, and so I, I love that because that's sort of like the, the tension it creates when you've got a guy next to you accelerating, you know, at least for me, I can't, I can't help but like, okay, that, that motivates me that I'm going to push a little bit harder. And um, I think that's kind of what maybe what works, um, in this group so well. So I love it. Yeah. There's it, again, the, the, it's so great. There's always a break room or, you know, for me, um, 
there's there's a break room there's a beeps there's a farva there's a there's yeah. all these guys who i am chasing all the time and tight lips pretty fast tight too, lips right? a great runner yeah um there's you know if it if it was just one individual out front all the time and, and, and again somebody is that person it is not me in f3 mm. omaha uh whoever it is god bless their heart um but you know that would be could be almost a lonely existence but to, yeah. for me to have always have somebody there that i can chase is um is super helpful like i was just on vacation after the kids got out of school, we went up to our lake place for a week up in Minnesota. And, uh, I didn't go with an F3 guy. I should have, cause I, mm. I kind of didn't do anything. You know, I, we did some lake stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, but I was like, you know, I, I could go for a run. I could do all these things. And I mostly slept in and it's an, again, it's a kind of a testament to the guys around you and the camaraderie and that second F is really mm -hmm. what makes it so enjoyable. Like the, the workout again is it's a workout and it's, uh, it's work. Yeah. Um, but doing it with the guys, having people out in front that are pushing you, that's what makes a difference for me. Makes a huge difference. I curious, you know, in that sort of lake or vacation mode, are you able to get there? Like, I know, I know for myself, like, you know, I'm, I'll let my family be in vacation mode. I can kind of be in vacation mm -hmm. mode, but it gets to this point where I'm sort of like, I got to do something or I'm going to, I'm going to lose it, you know, but how do you, how does that work for you? I think, uh, you know, in th this particular trip was just kind of the circumstances and the people we, we took some friends up with us. And so anyway, I, 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 I probably should have made some time and space for myself to do something. Cause I'm, you know, again, I'm usually a better person. I'm a better dad. I'm a better husband when I, when I get up and I move uh, really intentionally like that. Um, but this very specific trip didn't, um, didn't really make the time for it and probably got a little stir crazy a couple of times because of it. Uh, we'll we'll yeah. be going back up in July and uh, it looks like I'm being roped into helping uh, kind of promote the Murph challenge. So the July, yeah. August Murph challenge and actually I, uh, let's see, two years ago when, when we had our uh, cabin trip that year, I was mid Murph challenge as well. And like knowing that I had to complete Murphs or I was going to fall behind was great motivation too. So it's kind of like that was, that was creating accountability for me, even when I was remote, uh, because I was part of that, the Murph challenge and that, you know, had to, had to had to sign the, you know, put my, my tallies up on the leaderboard and whatnot. Yeah. And so, uh, I'm actually, though I'm dreading the Murph challenge because it's like the, one of the toughest, most grueling challenges that I'm used to, at least through F3, uh, it will hold me accountable. I know that next trip up there. Yeah. Well, and, and now we got it all in PaxNet. So PaxNet so. is so great. Like you guys have done such a great job with that. It's, oh. it's amazing. It's uh, yeah. I don't think anybody on the team would would uh, be willing to take credit. I mean, it's really been iMac. I mean, honestly, that dude is an animal. Sure. And um, man, you know, it's funny. I think Escobar. I saw a message from him that, that said, uh, you know, all these companies we have we have IT teams with five hundred plus people, and all we really need is one <laughs> iMac. Clearly, because he's doing it all. But you no, know, I you know, um, I like what you said there because I I do think. Um, there is a way to connect with the other guys. Maybe um, even if you can't make it out, mm -hmm. you know, even if you're on vacation or right. We, and, and maybe that's some of the value behind these challenges, right? You can participate downrange. You can participate from home, right? If you have, get a pull up bar or some, some way, um, you know, so I, I love that. Um, I haven't necessarily thought of it that way, but maybe I'll have to try that when we, when baby number three gets here for us in October, yeah. I'll probably take a month off. And that's, um, you know, last time that happened in 21, it was really hard, you know, to step away sure. for a month. Um, but it was the right thing to do. Right. So it's an interesting, uh, dynamic or balance. Um, want to move into some, you know, we think about the second F or the fellowship piece, really our lens on that has kind of transformed at least on the podcast here into sort of relationships. Mm -hmm. Right. So you've got, the concentrica model. So your, your M is in the middle, your 2.0s, and then you've got a lot of your 
uh, like shield lock or maybe F3 uh, relationships and then work is on that outer ring. Um, give us a, you know, a little bit of context here. You're, you're married, how long you've been married, how many kids you guys have, uh, that sort of thing. And then maybe talk us through how F3 has helped develop or strengthen some of those relationships. Sure. Yeah. So I've been married uh, to Jackie, Jacqueline, for 13 years. Um, we have four kids. Uh, so Will, George, Eleanor, and Louisa, we call her Lulu. They are mm. um, 11, 9, almost 7, and almost 3. Okay. So um, my concentrica feels like that, like if it's a, if it's a circle, that's like 98% of the circle right there, you know? Uh, yeah. And they, uh, one of the beauties of F3 is I can get up and get it, get it done uh, and still take them to school. You know, I, I can be home yeah. before they're awake. I can, I can make breakfast. I can do those things. That's w- critical for me. Um, so that's a big part of, um, you know, my day to day, obviously. I, you know, I often, I often wish I could do more of the, you know, the second F, the outreach stuff, the volunteerism. I, I, I'm all about that. I don't necessarily have the hours in some cases, and that's a bad excuse because sure. everybody ha- could make the same excuse. Um, but that, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like I should be doing more there because F3 has given me an awful lot. Uh, but I do try to be as present as I can for my kids. Um, yeah. you know, just trying to kind of think through that. I still like slow pitch and I are still coaching baseball together actually, which is, uh, yeah. which is really great. And that, that coaching aspect is something that, um, I really find joy in. And it's, it's fun to do it with him because, you know, he's such a, he's such an off the wall kind of character. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was going to, I was going to use his real name, but, but ketchup, um, not somebody that I work with day to day so much anymore, but I absolutely know that I can, I can lean on him, uh, for anything that I need. Um, you know, there's, there's so many guys that I feel really comfortable with being open with. I mean, uh, you, you, you get through so many COTs and you see people get really vulnerable and, and really honest, transparent, and you know, it, it gives you license to do the same thing. And so, um, you know, I, there's, uh, there's been, there's been plenty of days where, the the beat down or the cot was was a big part of of like pulling me out of something that it was going on in my own head yeah. um and again that's that's just a testament to the guys that are out there yeah i really i love that you're where you're going with this because um a lot of it's seasonal right our ability to participate in certain activities and although we offer we offer so many things right in F3 Omaha, but I I think the intent is never that like you have to attend them all in order to be a part of the group or, you know, I think we're just trying to create as many opportunities for guys to get involved as they're, as they're able. But I know over the years, it's kind of been that it's a little bit of a nuance in terms of like how much is too much to where you people that can't go to all the second and third F things or can't make it to six workouts a week. You know, we, we don't want people to start feeling like they're missing out or they're not a part of. And I think a lot of that's an internal sort of conversation where get, we need guys to realize, like, even if you post once a week, right. I know for the longest time, um, Reba, right. Who's a Redwood, he could only post on Saturdays, but man, when I got to see Reba, it was like awesome, like highlight of my week. And, and, you know, so the, the reality is you can plug in whenever, wherever you, you are able and we're going to still love you, accept you, support you, whatever you need. And there's no, like you have to post or attend or do these things in order to receive that love and support of the group, which is just, 
it's that's not any other group out there that operates right. that way. So I think that's why it's un, uncommon for us, or we don't really know how to deal with that. Right. No, I I absolutely agree. I mean, I've again, I've I've always felt like I should be doing more, but I've never been made to feel bad about that. Again, that's that's my own that's my own internal dialogue. Uh, certainly not getting that from anybody else, and and it's always. You know, it's always open arms anytime anybody shows up. It's a, you know, it's a really, it's a really unique group, I think. And and maybe, maybe Omaha is even unique to F3. I don't know. I've posted downrange a few different places. Um, But, you know, to have this group of guys who wants to go out and just work that hard, but also be that accepting of others and like anybody can come and show up. And, and again, you're, you're a brother on your first day. That's, that's not normal. (laughs) Right. It's really, it's really, really unique. That's um, we as men are not really, we're not programmed to act that way. That's like, we have to, we have to erase things and then recode it in order to do that. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know, I want to get your thoughts on, you know, for somebody with your like posting abilities, because the other thing I want to point out too is you, you still were a site queue, right? So there's no like, you know, we're only making guys site queues that are doing all the things, right? So I, I think that's really important too. How did you still like, where did you find those connection opportunities, right? Did you go to coffee? Were you just making space during the workouts? How did you still, um, develop some of those deeper relationships you know um again some of my deepest relationships were were kind of pre-existing in some capacity and this was Mm -hmm. you know f3 has just been an expansion on that um nice and then you know uh, so many so many friendships and so many just supportive interactions through the through the beatdowns first. And then, you know, I hit coffee occasionally when I, when I can, uh, but it's, that's always so, it's always so enjoyable. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I struggle to think of a negative interaction in, in all of those different instances. And so yeah. it's, uh, like, it's hard to pinpoint cause there's so, there's so many, just little, just little things. Not again, it's not, these aren't grandiose gestures of any type, but just really solid interactions. People telling you about what they're up against or what successes they're having and and just being able to share in that and be a part of that with so many great guys. Um, it's again, it's just really special. For sure. Yeah. I, and I do want to just comment that whatever you're, you're doing is working. Cause I, I, for me, um, having kids has been a, a struggle, right? Like it's every time God blesses us with another child, he, I think he's sort of, he's playing with me and, and making me remove my ego, right? Cause I'm so selfish all the time. <laughs> and I remember, I, I think I was complaining one time to you about something and, um, I don't know, the result of our conversation was, was I sort of just have to, had to change my mindset and kind of develop this mantra that like, babies are selfish. They're the most selfish person, people that we know, but they're also the most helpless. Um, and so I just, you know, looking up to you as a guy with more experience as a father and having you tell me like, it's okay. I've had those, you know, same feelings and thoughts too. And here's how I got through it. I mean, that was life changing for me. Um, you know, and I, I don't know that I ever told you that, but I think that was just a simple conversation on a pre-run. I was complaining and you provided some insight into, into the way you've handled it. So, um, yeah, just appreciate you. You know, I, I, I appreciate you saying that I'm certainly not, uh, I'm not qualified to write any children's rearing books anytime soon, (laughs) but I think like it's, it feels like the world, um, wants to make, especially like first time I remember being a first time parent and just being completely terrified. And there's like so much out there and and everybody's got an opinion and and they make it so hard. And my, I mean, my wife and I just struggled with our first kid Mm -hmm. uh, mightily. And so um, having four 
I had no intention uh, setting out to have a large family or four kids. Uh, they're all amazing. You know, they're all absolutely amazing. Um, and I've learned a little bit more with each one. And by the fourth, you, you don't even have time to be a parent for the fourth kid. So you see it, they don't, you know, other than for basic needs, they don't really need you to, to be in their business a hundred percent of the time. They can figure out a lot mm -hmm. of things on their own. And so all of that stress, I remember feeling from, from being a first time parent, it's sort of like now when I see, you know, when I see people having the, their first kid, I say it every time. I'm like, eh, it's going to be fine. It's really, really scary, but it's absolutely going to yeah. be fine. People have been having babies for thousands and thousands of years and yeah. uh, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. And I think you even shared a, maybe a vacation hack with me one time. Did you guys, you went to a dude ranch one we did, time, right? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and maybe there was one other vacation, but I feel like you told you were telling me about um, going, finding a place that has like a kid's program yeah. or like somewhere that can watch the kids. So you and your M can go and at least have some, a little bit of relaxation time. So I appreciate that too. I haven't convinced my wife to do it, but <laughs> we'll get there it was, that was uh, just, that was a great vacation and yeah the the all-day kids club where you just send them and they you know they go and they do their thing all day long that was that was a great innovation on my or for our family as well for sure it was an yeah. awesome vacation liberty core real estate is your homegrown real estate broker if you're looking to buy or sell real estate whether personal or investment armando aka brian and megan michael's company is ready to serve you with command center in old town elkhorn and agents all throughout the metro they are more than ready to guide and serve you in your next real estate endeavor whether your next move needs to happen now or in five years call or text armando at 402 770 2165 to get your questions answered. And a special offer for F3 Nation PAX members, Liberty Core will donate $250 to your sponsor of choosing for every closed transaction. Stop looking, start finding today with Liberty Core Real Estate. Hey, you mentioned something earlier that I, and maybe I knew this and just forgot, but, but talking about, um, sobriety and just kind of curious maybe other areas where you've had some success and was that a was that a problem for you and then you sought to be sober or you just kind of intentionally said this is a waste of my time i'm going to stop stop drinking or um, any 12-step program involvement there just kind of curious what your journey's been on that side yeah uh no f formalized programs um you know no no real intervention to speak of. It was just, um, it had been something I've been, I've been struggling with just kind mm. of my relationship with alcohol yeah. for a really long time. Um, and probably, you know, probably from my first drink, which was probably way too young. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, grew up in a small town. It was one of alcohol was one of the few things that seemed like we could do, yep. uh, again, not, that's not a good excuse it, you know, our, our worldview should have been wider than it was even coming from where we came from. But, um, it just sort of progressively, it progressively occupied more and more and more of my headspace as I worked mm -hmm. through college. Um, cause I, I didn't really, you know, compared comparatively speaking, I was in high school. I was, a uh, maybe below average, consumer compared to some of my peers for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, in college got a little bit more and then working into my profession and it just, it got to be more of my life than I wanted it to be. Yeah. And I, I, I let it like, even knowing that being kind of self-aware of it, I let that go on for probably a few years and then just sort of got fed up with it and decided yeah. that I should say it back up. I did a three month run of sobriety, which was like the best three months I had had in a really long time. And then, you know, I'm like, Oh, I have this under control. I think that's a pretty common story. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got this under control. I can go back and started drinking again and did, you know, two, three more years, um, with an unhealthy relationship. And then, yeah, it'll be almost five years ago. Just decided why, why depart from that great three months of sobriety? Like just 
you know, it's going to be hard for a while, but just commit to that. You won't regret it. Uh, I had great, you know, I had great support of, of other guys at that time that had gone through AA and other things like people I could lean on a little bit. Um, I didn't, I didn't go that to that extent myself. Um, but sure. you know, again, luckily I haven't, I haven't needed to. And I, I yeah. really, I just, I don't miss it. It That's was awesome. so much like wasted energy in, in hindsight and in retrospect, like so much time and effort spent worried about that at this point it feels kind of silly to me yeah yeah i'm the, I'm the same way i was talking to somebody on a run the other day about my past life and it and it just sort of is like i can't believe some of the stuff that i did thought you know um the things i was spending my time doing so well congratulations that, that's a really cool thing and and thankfully you noticed it and made a change before something happened you know i think a lot of people have to hit some sort of rock bottom or have an event that causes them to, to seek help. But, um, yeah, that's awesome. Appreciate you sharing that story. Um, curious, you know, want to move into the third F and just kind of get your, uh, hear your journey and, and kind of your third F space. So, uh, talk us through, um, growing up was, was faith a part of life and maybe how that's, uh, progressed as you've gotten older. Yeah, for sure. So I, I grew up, um, pretty much a weekly attendee at a uh, Lutheran church in my, in my small hometown, uh, <clears throat> you know, did all the steps and, um, you know, confirmation and, and all of those pieces. Um, definitely lapsed entirely. Mm-hmm. I would say once out of the house, you know, once, once mom wasn't, uh, dragging you up every dragging time. me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let that just kind of let that go all through college uh, ended up many years later. So it would be almost 10 years ago. Now I converted to Catholicism. So my wife uh, grew up Catholic. She went to Catholic school uh, K through 12 and um, we're parishioners at St. Margaret Mary. You know, my, uh, it's a little, it's, it's unique. So I spent three years on the school board at the school kind of, um, at St. Margaret Mary, uh, just kind of in the middle of some of that administrative world Mm -hmm. and, uh, really developed a, a meaningful relationship with the priest there. Um, that's father Ralph O'Donnell and, I think uh, I need to figure out some ways to recommit myself hmm. to uh, my faith life. If there's if there's anything that I'm sort of conflicted on or, or struggling with at the moment, it's probably that. Um, and there's no specific reason for it necessarily. I think it's easy to get, um, you know, it's easy to atrophy. If you mm-hmm. don't, if you don't exercise the muscles, right? So uh, something I've been kind of tangling with for for quite some time now, um, and I don't know what the answer is really yet. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that, and you know, I think what's you know, at least from an F three standpoint, right? We're not a religious group. We're not you know trying to prescribe a certain faith or or belief system, but just having that knowledge that there's something outside of yourself, something bigger than you that's, that's controlling everything. And it, and it sounds like you've, you've got that, um, you know, at least established, right. As the, as a, as a mindset, what do you think, um, you know, as a group, like, is, are there things we maybe could or should be doing to kind of help guys as they're exploring? Cause I hear a lot of guys in a similar situation, right? And, yeah. I don't know. You know, I think f- for me, I just, being very open. Like I see, I see religion in its organized capacity being misappropriated and like Mm -hmm. misused on so many levels Yeah, that it, it just makes it. And I, again, I'm a, I'm an engineer. I've got like, I've got a fairly rational brain. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes that can, you know, I have to fight myself when it comes to religion just a little bit. Yeah. And then to see it, to see it kind of warped into something that's used 
uh, you know, to score political points or to, you know, pit one group against another group, you know, that I just have kind of cognitive struggle with that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know entirely what F3 could do. What, what, what is really, I think, helpful is, is for me to see guys like you, other guys in the group that have really strong faith bases that aren't, uh, you know, fundamentalist or kind of extremist or, or, you know, often, often left or right field, right? Yeah. Um, people that I, can, that I can really personally relate to that also have really strong faith basis, that's useful. Just sort of that, that um, example that you set yeah. helps me maybe accept religion more easily. Yeah. Well, it, it's definitely an interesting topic. I, you know, for me, I, I, when I was in, I didn't grow up going to church, but I, in college, I got involved in Campus Crusade. And one of the things Campus Crusade always said, and, and I have to laugh because it's just, this isn't the way that it works, but they basically, you know, if you read these three Bible verses to somebody and they, they say they want to commit their life to Jesus, then, then all of a sudden they're saved. And it's like this magical thing. Um, but what I've learned over time is just like focus on relationships with other people, get to know them and let let God just do his work, right? If God is truly who I think he is and works the way I think he does, he doesn't need me to throw a Bible verse in your face to make you believe any sort of thing. But there's, there's sort of this other camp that's like overly preachy. And, you know, I try to watch my COTs. I, I've been a little preachy as of late, but I think um, it's just important that we have a space for guys to, to do the searching in a mm -hmm. safe way manner that they that they can ask questions or that they can attend a book study or whatever um because that's my my biggest thing is like i don't want guys to stop searching if they're you know like you're never gonna have all the answers but at least you have a safe place to have the conversations and to explore what what your beliefs are because that's um yeah i don't know that's where my heart's at but but yeah what do you think uh what what are next steps for you in that area or do you have any at this point, or you're just kind of on standby. You know, or, uh, so, so uh, my three, my three school age kids go to St. Margaret Mary. They go to the uh, parochial school, and yeah. uh, and we love the school. We love the community. My my son Will, my oldest, w is going into sixth grade, and um, that's when he would be in potentially be an altar server. Okay. And so I'm going to ask him, you know, or kind of kind of leave it up to him if he wants to be engaged in that. I, I kind of hope that he will. Yeah. And that will force us to get back to mass on a more consistent basis. Yeah. Um, I always feel better when I go. It's, it's, uh, you know, some of that's probably just my, my lifelong wiring. Yeah. But some of it is, um, you know, there's a real, there's a real benefit to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a unique question. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I appreciate your where you're at. You know, I think there's um, there's so many of us that are in a similar space. And I, I heard a quote this morning, uh, basically that that doubt is the starting point of faith. Uh, so I just I think the you know if, you, if people have questions, find, you know, go and seek and try to learn and understand. And you know, I think I've watched many guys over the years that as long as they stay curious, you know, and, and don't, um, close any doors. And, you know, I think that's just a really healthy spot to be. And, um, you know, I, maybe, maybe you never get it exactly figured out the way our mind wants us to, uh, but, it, but don't stop uh, searching. Um, you know, uh, curious, you know, we could probably have a an hour long conversation just on that, uh, whole area, but, you know, the other piece that we like to talk through is leadership, right? So this is a, a men's leadership group, right? Reinvigorate male community leadership. And we try to do that through your time as a, you know, like get, get guys to do a VQ, maybe mm -hmm. um, kind of pump up your confidence a little bit or get you to lead a site. And you've done both. So curious if you have any memories from those and, and maybe how you feel like uh, those helped you develop as a leader. You know, I think... Um... In, in some ways through mostly through 
my profession. I've been asked to be a leader well before I started in F3. Mm -hmm. But I think that F3 has, has allowed me to trust myself um, more, to have more confidence in myself, my own leadership ability, and specifically with men, maybe older men, maybe, maybe bigger men, maybe like more physically yeah. fit or active or imposing men, you know? Um, that was always for, for a long time. And it, again, I was kind of very lucky to, to have a kind of a diverse team, men, women, um, you know, not everybody look in one specific way, but I seem to, I don't know. I, I have always wondered, and again, maybe it goes back to upbringing. Like, mm -hmm. am I tough enough? Sure. Am I strong enough? You know, I pull-ups, I hated pull-ups. I've hated pull-ups my entire life. And now I'm doing the Murph challenge. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a lot of those questions of, are you enough? Are you a man enough? I feel like F3 has really helped me answer that for myself. Yeah. And in a, in a really healthy way, like not a, Again, we're not a, we're not a type A group where this isn't hyper competitive. This is the opposite of that. And so there's a lot of ways that could go wrong. That kind of exercise and discovery or how you come to your own, to kind of own your own manhood. Yeah. Uh, this is a healthy way to do it. And it's, it's really helped me be more confident in my self. That's awesome. That's so cool because I, I think there's there's so so much to that that is just um, like it helps you in all aspects of leadership, right? At home with your family or at work, like you said. And and to me, it's like you said, it's not the it's not um, like because you ran faster, you're a man, but it's because you now have this group of all these different guys that are sort of validating you as you are are a man, right? And, the, and a respected man and you're worthy and all of those things. And I think it's just, if we look to the world, right? I, I spent a lot of time on, on YouTube, unfortunately watching like motivation videos or, but if, but if I look to those guys on YouTube to define me as a man, I'm going to be chasing and I'm going to go down some wrong paths, right? Mm -hmm. If the size of my biceps determine my manhood, I've, I've missed the boat. And I think what I hear you saying is there's, um, a lot of value in being around this group that validates you as you are, which is super cool. What do you think as a site queue, you know, as you think about uh, maybe guys like break room or other guys that are, are looking to be a site queue or guys that are new to that role, what did you find helpful or what were some, maybe what would be some advice that you might have to offer some, some other site queues? Uh, well, I identified in like the first four minutes of break room being the site queue. Uh, when I passed my flag just a few weeks ago, he's far more organized or at least more proactive with the queue schedule than I am. Uh, <laughs> so I would definitely advocate for folks to, to try to be <laughs> reach out be communicative. Uh, and it, you know, I'm, I'm that's half tongue in cheek cause I didn't really have trouble getting things, uh, filled up, but you know, it's, um, it's an honor to be, asked. Uh, for me, it, again, it was sort of a joyous occasion to pass my flag to break room. Mm -hmm. Somebody who I saw who started running behind me and by the end was absolutely out in front of me and to watch him accelerate and to know that, uh, that flag was going to be, was going to be in good, uh, hands, but also he would, he would take it further. He'd do cool things, uh, that I hadn't even thought of. Yeah. Like that was, that was really, again, sort of a joyous thing for me mm. to see him go and be successful. Uh, you know, it's, I'm trying to think of other, uh, outside of it being like a real honor. Again, Futurama, which was my site, it was just, it still is just a really special place for me. Yeah. Um, try to have fun with it. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, one thing I, I have to check myself on is, you know, just again, my kind of my personality, 
I always kind of want to push. I want to, I want to go as hard as I can. Like I have, I question, are you having fun with what you're doing? And, and that's something that I absolutely am having fun when I'm out with F3. Uh, but I think it should be something we can have fun with if we're a site queue. Mm -hmm. And really, if you're, if you're, if you're on the queue schedule, uh, hopefully you can have fun with that too. My, a VQ should be a very joyous occasion. Like, mm -hmm. and I, re I remember my own and it was, uh, I was on a high like that entire day. And uh, yeah, I didn't expect that, you know, you don't expect it, but it's, it's a real thing. You hear about it. Yeah. Q for Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I think you're spot on too. I, I struggle having fun all the time too. And, it, and it's just, <laughs> it's such a good reminder. And when you think about like the risk you know, the risk of failure is pretty low and, yeah. and then the consequence of failure is also pretty low. Like if, yeah. if you mess up a workout, uh, you know, the, I don't know. Um, so I, I think it's, it's the right space to have fun and make mistakes. If, But I mean, everybody cares so much. Like, right. I, I mean, I know my VQ, I probably slept two hours the night before and that's yeah. typical. Like I think most guys yeah. are there because you just want to, you want to, you want to honor everybody else, you know, you want to yep. honor the, the role and the position. And so, um, again, it's, that's a function of the people who come out and do this. Yeah. It's just, we're all, we all just want to do our best with, yep. with what's in front of us. Well said, man. Anything from your perspective that maybe we, we didn't get to cover today that you want to share while you got the, the hot mic? Uh, I, you know, we've covered, we've covered a fair amount of ground here. I, I could talk for six more hours about how great F3 has been yeah. for me, uh, about all the guys that I meet and, uh, you know, just how happy people are to see you. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I, I can't think of one thing cause it's a million things I could talk about. Sure. I love it. And how about for you as, as we see you out there, in the gloom or maybe as we're just, you know, connecting with you, are there any areas where you need prayers or encouragement currently? Anything we could say to kind of nudge you in the, in the right direction next time we see you out the, in the gloom? You know, I think, uh, if you see me, you can just remind me to have a good time. Okay. Uh, and, and absolutely, um, you know, you, you can pray for me anytime you want and yeah. I'll absolutely take it. Awesome. Well, this has been great, man. Just appreciate you sharing your story. And uh, I know I've benefited from you and your leadership and just the man that you are. So uh, yeah, this is, this has been great. I'm excited for guys to hear this. I know a lot of guys will identify with, with the things you shared. So uh, yeah, let's do a little name -a I'll start us off here. Brandon Flea Hardy, 38, the plague. Ah. Adam Christensen, 42 stitches. Stitches. And do we make a sound? Is there a call sign or did we so come So Dollface does ouch. Ouch. Okay. And he just told me this morning uh, that he wants everybody to, to, to uh, hop on that bandwagon. Yeah. Ouch again, because I ripped myself on a hurdle. You guys yeah. heard that a little bit ago. Yeah. Uh, so he, he really wants that to catch fire, but he's been trying for probably two years and it's, he's the only one that ever says it. I'm going to say it next time I'm, I post. You with should. You, I'm you gonna definitely should. Yeah. Awesome, man. <laughs> hey, thanks for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Plague. Have a good day, man.